Hi there, welcome to Sunnyside Journals. Welcome to a little visit. I've had a whole bunch of you asking about um, about the book that I had published years ago. Honestly, it's been almost 20 years. <laughs> and let me preface this right now. It was not a Caldecott winner. <laughs> hard industry to get into illustrating children's books very hard industry and it was something that I enjoyed for a little while and uh, but I I learned by about the third one that it wasn't for me uh, let me just preface it I, I've always been I've always worked on art my whole life ever since a crayon got put in my hand with some paper in front of me <laughs> Um, I'm mostly self-taught, but I have taken um, courses. I, as I mentioned, I did a two-year scholarship course at the uh, Art Gallery of Ontario, and I've taken courses through Canscape, which is an organization here in Canada. It's fabulous. It's the Canadian Society for Authors, Illustrators, and Performers, and they do just magnificent workshops, especially for illustrators, uh, illustrators of children's books and that. And I've been able to work, uh, learn, pardon me, uh, through such illustrators as Michael Marchenko. That one might ring a bell for you. He does a lot of Robert Munch's books. I love Michael Marchenko's work. It's so fun and whimsical and active. Um, also, uh, Katie McDonald Denton, Ruth Ohai, Phoebe Gilman. Um, oh, there's the, my mind is going. Anyhow, I've been able to actually take workshops uh, with these artists that has just was a dream come true. And I was also able to take a summer course, an intensive course at Sheridan College in Oakville, Ontario. You may have heard of Sheridan College. It's quite world famous. Uh, a lot of Disney, uh, a lot of uh, graduates from Sheridan have been snapped up by Disney. Um, so, and I was able to take an intensive course one summer uh, out there on just on children's picture book illustration and learn the ins and outs of it because I really, really, I really thought, oh, this is for me. This is what I want because I love doing whimsical I love fun and just cheery. I'm not a real life kind of artist. I've tried, um, but it's not for me. Very frustrating. I'm not that good. <laughs> but fun artwork, I love it. Anyhow, um, when I was just a new mom, I discovered this magazine, Nurturing Magazine, at a health food store I was in. And it was published by a woman in Toronto. And I loved it. It was sort of Canada's version of Mothering Magazine. I don't know how many of you moms, parents out there who know about Mothering Magazine. Now think about it. This is, <laughs> I'm aging myself here. That's 1984. And Mothering Magazine also used to look like this. It's very much a magazine now, but it used to look like a, it was just all in black and white and very homey and comfy and cozy. Um, anyhow, when I found out that the lady publishing this magazine was in Toronto, um, I approached her and said, hey, if you ever need any black and white artwork, uh, I'm your girl. And she said, yeah, she was a lovely woman. Her name was Marga. I recently found out that she's passed away, but um, Marga was a lovely, lovely person. And so whenever she needed calligraphy or little drawings, um, she would let me know what she needed and I would draw them up and uh and hold on, let's see if there's any here so it's very similar to mothering in that it was really promoting a sort of a natural parenting oh this was a little comic strip that i got to put in for a few episodes called the family frolic i called it so that's actually me I, when i had my short hair and uh, that's my daughter emily and jordan and there's josh um i still went on to have two more children after that but uh, so I, the family frolic was in her magazine quite a bit. Um, that's me again. She also had other artists like I didn't do this one or this one. Um, but there I am again, uh, cooking with Jordan and Emily at my feet and Joshua under my top. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And uh, Margo, Margo wasn't able to um, pay me. 
in money if she needed calligraphy I did uh, calligraphy for her she was never able to pay me in money but all the people that would buy advertising in the back usually would send her samples because uh, she wanted to know what she was promoting in her little magazine and they would send her uh, samples just to keep and Marga would pay me in stuff and uh, it was fabulous so um, it was a nice little gig for uh, for a little while I loved it and uh, it sort of got me, gave me a reason to do some drawing um, in between being a mom. And then it got really busy with five children. So I was sort of didn't do artwork for a few years. My art in my life would go in and out depending on the demands on my life <laughs> uh, and being a mom. But I finally decided I really, really wanted to get into back into it and see if I could make a go of it. So I started putting together artwork to send out as a portfolio to publishers. Now at the time in the, um, in the nineties, here, let me take these out. Uh, I don't know if it's changed now because I'm, as I said, I'm not interested anymore and I haven't pursued it. Um, back in the nineties, publishers would not look at an online portfolio. You had to send color photocopies of your artwork to them with a, you know, a resume and a, and a letter of introduction. So I was, I spent a lot of time working on um, artwork just to be able to put into a portfolio to be a children's picture book illustrator. I also did our family Christmas cards for a couple of years. This was 1996. So, you know, that's 12 years later. Life came and went in 12 years. I had a few friends that were just publishing. This lady uh, published a little pamphlet-type book. She self-published of um, her own poetry about parenting that she had written. And she asked me to design a cover. So I made a few covers for her. Uh, she opted for this one eventually. which And I love that one. I do have the... It's like a little tiny paperback book. Not tiny thin but it's this big um it's in my it's in my room downstairs in amongst stacks and stacks of boxes but this was in my my big black art portfolio so I was able to find it so the title was ended up up here her name and my little acknowledgement was down here and it ended up being very very pretty and I, I actually got paid for that one which was which was so exciting this is the artwork from the course I took at Sheridan College. We had to choose a fable and um, and illustrate it. So I chose the fable from the Brothers Grimm, The Three White Feathers. And uh, so I we had to do a spread uh, from what would be our book. So these were mine that I did for um, for that story. I love how the little toads turned out in it and uh, I was really happy with with uh, how that turned out and, and my teacher was too I got an A plus <laughs> so that was fun and so I also used these in my portfolio to send out to uh, publishers and um, a, a little thing that many people don't know is uh, if you want your book if either you're a writer or an illustrator or you're you're hoping to be both um, it's the it's the the big house publishers if you're just the writer the publisher will match you up with the illustrator they want a lot of writers who are just getting into it go oh I need to hire an artist no you don't not if you want to get pub you want a big publishing house to do your book they will match you up with the artist they want um, here's some artwork I was working on. I started with this one, and I was using brown ink. I do I do my first sketch in pencil, then I go over it with my watercolor. Um, I do watercolor, and I also do watercolor pencils to if I need some intensifying of the coloring. I'll go back over with a watercolor pencil. Um, but I wasn't quite enjoying that, so I redid it, and uh, I I went over it with black ink. This is with a dip pen. Um, with a nib and you dip it in the pen in the ink 
Um, and I liked this one better with the black ink as opposed to the brown ink. I usually will work on, I have a big light board that my dad made for me and I really enjoy doing um, this kind of work on a light board. Anyhow, so um, so in case you're, you fancy yourself a, a writer of children's picture books, don't start thinking you've got to find the illustrator unless you're going to put out the money and self-publish. But if you want... <laughs> If you want a big publishing house to do your book, they're going to match you up. Um, so again, this is artwork that I was putting into my into my portfolio. Just fun, fun little drawings. Again, this is all watercolor and pen and ink. Oh, this was also for that lady for the book that she self-published. But like I said, she paid me, so that was nice. Anyhow, I finally got a few nibbles. And uh, one of the nibbles was for um, a company that was going to make a series of 12 baby board books with no words in them so that the parent could tell the story themselves and start building a bond of enjoying time with their baby and a book and making it a pleasant time together. Uh, and it didn't matter whether the parent... Um, you know, if, if they couldn't read English, that wouldn't matter because you're going to tell your own story. Or perhaps the parent uh, or guardian of the child uh, couldn't read at all. It didn't matter because you would look at the, sto the picture and you would uh, tell your own words and make up your own story with the picture. And they were going to do a series of 12. And I got picked to do two of them. And I was, I couldn't believe it. And, um, so let me show you the artwork. I only have the artwork for one left. They, I didn't get my other artwork returned to me. And at the time, I won't go into details, but it just wasn't important to me to try and get my other artwork back. Um, but this was the artwork that went in. And you can see you do your artwork a little bit bigger so that they can reduce it and tighten up your picture. So again, this is watercolor. I flood with water first. And then I go in with the watercolor paint, and that's how you get that nice, smooth, um, you don't have that blotchy look that often watercolor paints will have. If you flood the paper with water first, just in the area. So I literally, it's like you're painting with water first, and then you go in and you paint again with your paint second. And you'll get that nice, smooth um then your your paints will look smooth and not blotchy. So I just, I love how that, this is one of my favorite ones. Isn't that cute? The flowers look like fried eggs, but they wanted really simple but bold patterns. And uh, they were happy with that. For the daycare scene, they wanted multicultural. So, uh, so we did multicultural. Um, the fun thing about it being an illustrator is you can sneak your own little personal things in. My son at the time, my youngest son, he had his fav favorite baby blanket, which he named B, uh, looked like this. So I put B into the book. And uh, there's mommy reading, uh, reading a book with the baby. We had this towel. We had this set of towels at home. So I put our own family towel into the book. So it, this was this was a lot of fun. It was very simple, so it worked up quickly. So at, initially, when I was doing these, um, that I did think, "Wow, yeah, this is what I want to do." <clears throat> and the other, the second book. So this was going to be book number four and book number eleven. Um, I only have this one picture left of book number eleven. Um, don't worry, you'll get to see it. So, so I did those up and of all things, they mailed me to, for my approval because there's a contract involved and I'm allowed two edits and the publishing house is allowed two edits. Um, if they want more edits than two, they have to pay me again, which is nice. And again, please keep in mind, um, an illustrator usually gets, and I did, uh, what's called uh, an advance on royalties, a non-refundable advance against royalties. So the illustrator will usually be paid upfront 
quite a good chunk, and depending how good you are and how in demand you are. Um, I was quite pleased, <laughs> thrilled, actually, with how much I got paid. Um, and so don't feel too badly for me. I, I've had one book published. I've completed two more books that that eventually didn't make it, but I got paid for them. And it was all a life learning lesson, right? So they sent me the mock-ups for my approval. So here was going to be um, book four um, for Baby's Busy Day. And then this was book 11, Talk to Me. They provided me with the storyboard that they wanted in the book with certain specific things that they wanted. But then I had free reign um, of what, you know, the colors I wanted to do, the style I wanted to do, that sort of thing. It, it's just a lot of fun. So here now you'll see where my artwork is. We just looked at that, remember? Uh, so they mock this up. This is the size it was going to be. So these are reduced. Um, it would give me the chance to check out the color to see whether maybe sometimes when watercolor or any paint is reproduced, it doesn't quite look the same. And it gives me the option of redoing it if I don't like how that color is looking. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So that's fun. I did a cute thing. I was able to know ahead of time. Uh, I thought it was a clever thing. What the cover of this book, I knew it was going to look like this. They told me ahead of time it would look like this. So on this page where the mommy and baby are reading, I actually made the cover of the book look like the cover of the book that they were reading. Baby was reading his or her own book. <laughs> and then they, you'll see in a second, uh, changes were made because the publisher is allowed to to do that. Um, and then this one, I loved the artwork for this one. I almost wish this is the one that finally made it, but it's this one that made it. Um, I just love this mommy and this little person here who's just determined trying to say what they want and trying to explain to mommy what they want. And uh, just the frustration of mommy trying to figure out um, what the message is and what is so important so that one there's the one that i still have the original of this one or i believe no you know what the original would still be wherever wherever it ended up that would have been an off that the one i saved would have been one that i opted for whatever reason not to do now yeah, that's gonna drive me crazy oh yeah look it's i made it I changed it up. She's looking this way in. Oh, I probably figured out that it was going to be on this page, so I wanted to keep the activity going in. Yeah, blue question mark, red question mark. So, yeah. Um, anyhow, this one, I really love how the artwork turned out. I think she's so pretty. And I just love that little face on that, on that little person. Um, anyhow, so... Um, they were going along with it. They were going to be releasing these books in um, books uh, or packages of four, so 12 books. So there would be three releases over the course of a year. And um, here was the first one. And I was thrilled they opted to put my artwork on the front of the box. There were other artists also chosen, because remember, there's 12 books. So um, no other artist got chosen for two. I was really honored. And um, so there were these, all these little baby board books, and there's mine. So, and they sent me complimentary boxes. I have one extra one. I actually found one on its own at one of those book clearance places that pop up every once in a while in an empty store. So I bought it because <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> um, Anyhow, so you can see they opted to change the cover. I do see why. This is much more colorful and engaging than what the mock-up was. Much, much nicer, uh, brighter to look at. And uh, it just, it came out really cute. The colors, I was happy with the colors. Um, and this one actually went out... For a while, it was on Amazon. I couldn't believe it. Like, I could go onto Amazon, and there was my book. <sighs> and uh, and sadly, as with 
you know, it's just like in Hollywood and that when people, you know, actors or actresses make a movie and, and it ends up on the cutting room floor. Um, the, uh, this one, um, didn't make it. Talk to me. They, they only stopped at the one, I guess they ran out of money or whatever, but they only stopped at the one and you can't get it anymore. I mean, this is 20 years old now. Um, but it was a, a nice little claim to fame. It gave me something to put in my resume, which again gave me a chance to uh, get another contract. Hold on, let me find it. So I got another contract to do a book. And you'll note here, I've got all my original artwork. That's something that an illustrator should always put in their contract, that your artwork is your own and that it must be returned to you and that it's copyrighted. So when they sign a contract with you to print a book using your artwork, they get a one-time printing for you stipulate how many books are going to be printed. And uh, they get a chance to do that one time. Oh, there it is. I knew I had it somewhere else. <laughs> they get to do that one time. And then if they want to do a second printing, my goodness, if you're lucky enough to do a second printing, um, then they have to renegotiate and hopefully then you get even more money. <laughs> and then you become like Michael Marchenko, uh, which I did not. So this one was going to be a big book. It was 31 full color illustrations that they wanted. And uh, it was a ton of work. This took me, all this artwork took me probably about eight months, eight or nine months. And um, the challenge of being a children's picture book illustrator is you need to be able to draw the same characters. So however many are in your story, you need to be able to draw them over and over again, like 31 or more times and showing a variety of expressions. Uh, yes. oh, you know what I'll get into this showing a variety of expressions a sad character a happy character a surprised character you've got to be able to do them over and over and make sure that they look like themselves which is a tricky thing to do when you're an artist it's a very tricky thing and not all artists are cut out for it I certainly I think I did okay I'm quite happy with how my artwork turned out but as I said at the end of all this work um, and the effort that it took just to get this one book, I sort of realized my heart wasn't in it. <laughs> and, uh, and I was kind of okay when that sort of little glimmer of a chance in my life sort of came to its close. Again, I got paid. I got paid very nicely in American dollars for this artwork and I got it back. So they paid me and had to give it back to me. <laughs> so it's Okay. Um, but you can see here when I would redo ones, I redid this myself because I wanted to, I wanted, um, I just felt like this was very busy and didn't have too much of an artistic flair. It's a, this story is about recycling. Uh, so they, they wanted lots of different reason, uh, things about recycling and environmentalism and that sort of thing in it the main character was a little girl named Freddie and it was sort of a conversation one afternoon between Freddie and her grandmother who was her after-school caregiver so I just opted with this one when I redid it I like this much better uh, to just to bring it in a bit so think about it this would get cut off here I'm not sure if you can see my pencil hash marks up here but part of the white page would show through and I really like um, how this turned out uh, much better. Um, another fun thing about being an illustrator <laughs> is you can put little personal things in that nobody would know. Uh, for example, here's Freddie and her grandma at the park and they're talking about Freddie learned about recycling at school. So there's, you know, please recycle on the garbage bin and that. And uh, this is my daughter, Emily, and our dog, Bingo. And nobody else would have known that. Um, except our family. <laughs> so so Emily is, was in the book, Emily and Bingo. And then this is the one that I ultimately opted for. Again, I, I liked the look of putting in a bit of a frame and having some of the picture pop out over the edge, just for a little variety for your eye when you're, you know, turning pages. And again, you can see here, 
uh, much more intensive pen work over top of the watercolor. So I liked how that turned out. Um, there's Freddie and her grandma feeding the ducks. And this bridge, um, I, had, I had to take my children to a park one day. They, they can make, this is plastic lumber. And this bridge was made out of plastic lumber. So um, I had to, I went and did some sketching at a park once. And I remember taking all my kids with me because I was, we were homeschooling. So this was part of their education. Come on, mom needs to draw a bridge. <laughs> so I really love how the, the framing um, turned out. And so as I said, what publishers will do is, there's the what the original one was going to do, and I like the tightened up version better. I made them a little bigger um, and a little, a little more vibrant. The ground is a little more vibrant than it was here. So that was one of my editing options. They were actually indicated, gave every indication that they were happy with, um, with my finished artwork. But what publish, publishing houses will do is, for example, I'm going to throw out numbers. They're not necessarily accurate. Perhaps they've decided that for the upcoming, you know, two years in advance, they've got 30 books in schedule in their lineup and they'll have a variety of subjects, you know, history, crafts, stories. What are the stories about? Well, what's popular? Is it dinosaurs? Is it a, is it a, um, an alligator? Is it uh, talking vegetables? Is it about, you know, uh, having a single parent, a child, you know, the character has a single parent or, you know, they sort of like to have a nice variety in with their topics that they're going to tackle in their books. And then they get started on them and they hire the, you know, they choose out the manuscript, they, they choose out the illustrators, they marry them up. And um, then what will happen is they get it all ready. They get it to this point, like I was with me, 31 finished paintings of the story. <clears throat> And, um, oh, I loved how this one turned out. I liked all the cars as they're crossing the road. I thought that turned out nice. Um, and then what they'll do is, uh, you know, the year goes by, because this was like over, I lived in limbo for a while after I sent off my precious artwork. I sent it in a pizza box. <laughs> I didn't know what else to, I went to a, oh, hold on. I went to a pizzeria in town and asked for a clean pizza box and they sort of looked at me funny and I said, I need to ship artwork. I'll pay for the box. And they gave me the pizza box to, to ship it in. Um, hold on. Oh, there they are checking out the composting. So see what I mean? It's talking about recycling and talking about um, um, ways to be environmentally friendly. Uh, so then they'll have their big meeting. Okay, the upcoming year, this is it. And then they get ruthless. And they go, well, this publishing house, they already have, you know, last year they just put out a recycling book and it's doing really, really well. And I'm, we're not sure this one would do so good. This one, the title, the working title for it was My Recycled Neighborhood. So um, I'm trying to remember the author's name. I still have the storyboard and manuscript somewhere. Oh, I like how that one turned out too. I like Grandma's Kitty Cat. The kitty cat goes in and out of the pictures here and there. Anyhow, uh, so sadly, uh, this one um, didn't make the cut. No, there's the kitty cat again. The little girl dropped a, Freddie dropped a, a bowl or a, a cup and Grandma's saying, it's okay, that's all right. Well, we'll recycle it in with our crafting. And there they are talking about recycling pop cans. Anyhow, so yeah, so that's sort of my my brief little attempted stint at um, illustrating children's books. It was quite an education. Um, like I said, I very much enjoyed it, and um. It was a nice thing to learn. Oh, here's a working one before I... Look at how old this is. It's just crumbling right off. <laughs> it was an education, and um, I'm glad I had the chance to do it. I'm glad that it, I was the one who decided, you know what, I'm not cut out for this. Oh, they were also going to need some black and white drawings for on pages that just had printed word. 
so I did uh, some extra for them. Um, I'm glad that I sort of figured out for myself that this wasn't for me. And then I also approached a point in my life where I was actually going to need a really good full-time income. I was suddenly a, a solo parent and um, doing hair paid the bills, whereas this was so, um, it was so hit and miss. You can't really, oh, there we go. You can't really count on it to pay your bills. So uh, there we go. There's my little book that I did. Um, so it's nice to know it was me who said it's not for me. And I didn't have to go through too much, <laughs> too many uh, discouraging things. I think it was Katie McDonald Denton who's done a lot of books, um, written and illustrated, which so you get paid for both. Uh, she said that she used to uh, tape up all her rejection letters. <laughs> Apparently, that's a common thing to do. <laughs> so fortunately, I didn't have to do that very often because I'm the one who said, this isn't for me. I'm really going to focus on doing hair, doing it well, uh, earning a living at that well. Um, I, I've, and, it, you know, everything works out for a reason. So thanks for joining me today on our busy day. I hope you enjoyed maybe seeing a little bit more about some of the artwork I've done that isn't just junk journals. I, I, I promise you, all us junk journal creators, we are artistic in other ways. It's just an expression of our art, and we all do all different kinds of art, which isn't that wonderful? It's, uh, art just makes the world so much more fun and colorful. Take care. And we'll talk soon, and I will be doing an update soon on As You Like It. I have got to get back to work. Bye.